Peggy 18. In Company Heroes 2, we did something we hadn't done uh, before on previous games, and we actually took a research trip to Europe to visit some of the, the locations that we've been trying to portray in the game to get a sense of the history and the culture and the scale, a feeling for these two armies that, that fought each other. I mean, I've worked on a lot of games, and we always have a narrative, generally. Most of them, even when there's a seriousness to it, they're not quite as gritty or real as this one. In Company Heroes 2, we've covered all of the well-known battles of the Eastern Front. So players are going to be able to fight in the ruins of Stalingrad, uh, defend the city of Leningrad, ultimately push all the way to, uh, to the Battle of Berlin. We, we base our story on history. There's a, a, a number of characters that we've kind of composited into ours. They're really trying to get their experiences across and, you know, portray the, the, the horror and terror of World War II in a way that is sensitive but unflinching. The process for coming up with missions and making them happen, how we get variety, like daytime, nighttime, what the actual mechanic is, what the player's gonna do on an ongoing basis, is, is huge. We've expanded quite a bit from Company of Heroes 1. We've got missions where you're uh, leading a small group of snipers uh, through a countryside, eliminating German officers. We've got a mission where you're sieging a castle. They actually fought with modern weapons at some of these places. So you had tanks and machine guns where you might typically think about knights and, you know, <laughs> swords. The campaign itself is based on, you know, pouring over history books, reading personal journals and records from soldiers. So although we can't recreate those battles exactly as they were, we try to capture some aspect, some element of what they might have felt like. We want to pull people through um, playing one mission where maybe it's a little bit tough to deal with the elements that are in that mission because horrible things are happening. Horrible things happen on the Eastern Front. That's an authentic part of the experience. But at the same time, we know that needs to swing upwards, and so we'll look for something that's going to be like, what's going to be really fun? What's going to be really fun is storming through German lines with tanks. Yeah, let's do that. What I love is, is encapsulating that feel from mission to mission, even beats within mission, to get that swing and flow. And I love it when it comes together and you really feel like you played one mission and got like three different experiences. When, when we talk of, about the, the burden of command and, the, and the, the influence of choice on the player, it goes right back to the very basics and how we design the armies. We want to give them choice and make some of these choices really challenging. Some of those decisions involve whether to go back and rescue troops that have been lost, and in other situations, whether to blow up a bridge to prevent the Germans from crossing it, knowing full well that you have Russians on the other side. At that point, you're just kind of like, wow, this is a whole different ball game. Theater of War really is something where we're trying to extend the experience and the, and the ways in which you can play the game. And it's sort of just like, we know what happened in real life, so how did you handle it and can you get the same result? It's not competitive multiplayer. You don't have to worry about winning or losing. It's about you exposing yourself to the historical arc of World War II, but also to dig into some of the tactics that were used to help you become a better player so when you're ready to jump into multiplayer, you have that experience behind you. RTSs are inherently abstracted. You know, the camera's up high, and, and to deliver emotion and the kind of narrative experience that you want in a game is challenging. You're playing from a distance. Often people, players feel like the hand of God. They feel like they're just kind of controlling these little tiny men, but we wanted the player to feel like each soldier mattered. We have real places with their distinct landmarks. Like when you, when you fight in Berlin, there are places there that you would recognize if you've seen you know, photos of Berlin from that time or even been there and seen the ruins of those buildings. We put a lot of detail in the battlefield so you can zoom down and see it. Uh, and once you've seen it, you know it's there. And, and that you know, level of detail, even with the camera pulled up, ties you to the experience, sort of immerses you in the game. The feel of Company of Heroes comes from so many systems working together to immerse the player in that environment. The audio is, has always been incredible. The authenticity of the weapons, the, the movement of the soldiers, all of those things work together to pull the player into the game. As you play through as a player, I think it's impossible not to get deeper and deeper in that experience. It's real, it's gritty, it's dark, and by the end of it, you can't help but feel attached to the outcome. 
And I think the gamers are going to be very pleased when they get their hands on it.